Hello and welcome to UK Fitness Hub. My name's Travis Tarrant and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at the MCL. We're gonna be covering what it is, what it does, and the best rehabilitation exercises that you can do post-surgery or post-MCL injury. Let's get into the video. So firstly, what is the MCL? Well, MCL stands for medial collateral ligament. And in my hand here, I have an anatomical model of the right knee. And in this case, the MCL on this model sits medially, so at the inside of the knee. And when we're talking about ligaments, a ligament is something that attaches bone to bone. So in this case, it attaches your thigh bone, known as your femur, to your tibia, which is known as your shin bone more commonly. Injuries to the MCL can be an overstretching of the MCL ligament. It can be a partial or complete tear and tears are put into severity grades. Or alternatively, it can be where the MCL has detached itself from the bone, either the femur or the tibia. The MCL provides important stabilizing functions to the knee. So it stops the knee from going into a knee valgus or a knock knee type of position. And out of all the knee ligaments, the MCL is the most commonly injured. When I see MCL injuries, it tends to be as a result of sporting injuries. So football, rugby, even things like skiing, that's a very common one as well. And it's typically when there's been forced to the lateral side of the knee. So let's take a practical example. So football or soccer, if you're watching in the US, let's say this leg's planted, he's running along with the ball, does a quick turn, and somebody slide tackles laterally. So there's force on this lateral outside of the knee. The force comes in and it opens up the medial side to the inside of the knee. That can make the knee then vulnerable to tears um, and even full ruptures in some case. It depends on the severity of force going into the lateral side of the knee. Um, with skiing, it's more as a result of kind of impact. So if somebody lands, let's say like this, what you can tend to find is then there's force that comes in, ankle starts to buckle. Anything really where the medial side is opened up, that's where we get MCO injuries. In the UK, we grade MCO injuries from one to three. Grade one being where there's a mild injury with minimally torn fibers and no loss of MCO integrity. Grade two, where there's a moderate injury with an incomplete tear of the MCL, there might be increased laxity as well. And then when we get onto grade three, there tends to be where there's 95% or more of the fibers that have been damaged. More often than not, it's a complete rupture of the bone or a complete tear of the ligament. And how this is established and these grades are formed is by visual imaging like an MRI. So MRIs are important to establish the severity of the injury, but also if there's any other structures that have been damaged, so cartilage, meniscus, or other ligaments, for example. To summarize, typical post-injury protocols include visual imaging, such as an MRI, to help diagnose the injury, identify other injuries, and also assess injury severity. Mild injuries are unlikely to need an MRI. If the knee becomes heavily swollen and inflamed, icing the area may be instructed by your consultant or doctor until swelling and inflammation subsides. Elastic stockings and leg elevation may also be advised to reduce leg swelling. Post-injury advice for an MCO injury often includes keeping the knee in extension, known as a heel prop position, which we're gonna look at next. Finally, a return to range of motion exercises during your recovery will be instructed by your consultant or doctor. Then, progressions onto knee strengthening exercises can occur. Let's take a look at the heel prop position first. I place a cushion underneath my heel in this example to prop my heel up. Try to keep the heel propped up when you're watching television or resting in bed post-surgery. You can use a rolled up towel, a cushion, anything to prop the heel up. The purpose of the heel prop is to stretch out the knee. Gravity begins to pull the knee down into maximum extension, helping to keep the knee stretched out. Try not to place a towel underneath your knee as shown here. This might be a more comfortable position, but it can cause the knee to get tight and can be more difficult to get the knee straight during rehabilitation. Whether you've had a grade one, two or three injury or you've had surgery or not, there'll become a point in your recovery where you can return back to exercise and your doctor or consultant tells you that you can start simple exercise. 
the first phase of simple exercise when it comes to MCL injuries should be about trying to regain the range of motion lost post-injury. The second phase is making those simple exercises harder, trying to then challenge the knee further and go into strength-based exercises. Now, I don't want to assume that you've got access to a gym, so all of the exercises we're going to cover, bar the first one, you should be able to do from home. Let's look at some of those exercises. So with my clients post-surgery, once they've been given the all clear to go ahead with exercise again, the first place they start off with me is on the upright cycle. So the thing is with this machine, and the reason why I like this so much is because it's cheap, it's comfortable, it's easy to get on and off. This isn't one of those super duper bikes. It's perfect for what I want to do with the client, and that's find out if they have good range of motion, can they do a full cycle revolution, and if not, how can I then build them up to that? So one of the first things that I want to do with the client is get them onto the bike and get them set up in a position where this bottom leg, and this bottom leg in this example is my injured leg, has just a soft bend at the knee when I'm right at the bottom of the pedal. I'm gonna put all my weight on the other side, which is my right hand side, my good side in this example. And what I wanna do is have the client nice and relaxed and they're gonna use just their right leg, so I don't want them to use the left leg at all. And with the right leg, they're gonna push down on the pedal. The left leg's gonna move, almost like being a dead leg, and they're gonna try and see how far they can go into flexion. So I'll give you an example. They'll slowly use this right leg. My left leg, my injured leg is coming into flexion, and let's say the client gets to here, and they go, that's as far as I can go. That's as much range of motion I've, as I've got. One, now we've got a goal to aim for full revolution in the future. And we can then look at exercises to increase that, which we'll go into later. Once they can do that, I can then do repetitions. So I'm gonna take my good right leg and I'm gonna lift the pedal back up, easing the pressure off this injured knee. And I can do that again and we can do Know, 10 to 15 repetitions, getting the client as close up into flexion as possible and then easing them off nice and slowly. We can also do it the other way as well. So I can use just this right leg, push the other way, and they might come up as far as possible. And then just using the right leg again, I can then control it. What I don't want the client to do is come up into this position, then use this injured leg to kind of push down. The whole point is they're using their good leg to control the whole of the movement. If they can do a full cycle revolution, and often clients can do it um, the opposite way, so the reverse way before they can do it fully frontal, then what we can do is we can start to introduce exercise through the bike um, as the first thing we can do before we go into the exercises we're gonna cover after this. So it's a nice thing to do as a bit of a warm up before we go into the exercises you're about to see. But if I was gonna give you a guide on this, generally 10 to 15 minutes, 15 minutes maximum, there wouldn't be any resistance on this post-surgery. So yeah, once you've got to the stage where you can use exercise bikes, you wouldn't start loading up lots of resistance. It would literally be for the sake of trying to get the knee warmed up before the exercises we're going to cover and also to try and get the knee through range of motion. The first exercise we're going to look at is knee pushdowns. Start off in a seated position with the leg you would like to work out straight and your opposing leg bent at the knee. I place a cushion underneath my knee, but you can use a rolled up towel instead. I then push the back of my knee down towards the floor. And as I do so, I'm contracting my quadricep. Hold this held position for five seconds before letting the leg relax. Work up to completing 15 to 20 repetitions for three sets. To work the knee through flexion, start seated upright as I'm on carpet here, I'm using an exercise slider underneath my foot, but you may not need one if you have smooth flooring. If you don't have an exercise slider, you can use a hand towel on a smooth surface for the same effect. Begin to loop a belt, towel, or resistance band around your foot and pull your knee into a bent position as your foot slides towards your buttock. 
Only go as far as is comfortable, hold the stretch, then return back to the original position. Complete two sets, working up to 20 repetitions. Next, we're gonna to start to work the hip flexors by doing straight leg raises. Start off by lying on the floor, keep your legs straight and bend your other leg so that your knees bent and your foot's flat on the floor. Contract your quadricep muscles, then begin to raise your affected leg until both of your knees are approximately in line. Hold this position for a split second at the top of the movement before controlling the lowering phase back down, repeating for three sets and working up to 10 to 15 repetitions. The focus for our next exercise is to start working the quadriceps through a small range of movement. Partial knee extensions should only be done when you can do knee pushdowns. First, I start off in a seated upright position, then I place a foam roller just above the back of my knee on my hamstring. I'm slowly bringing my knee into extension as high as I can, then controlling the lowering phase until my heel touches the floor. As a guide, try to lower the heel down at a five second count. Work up to completing three sets for 10 to 15 repetitions. Hamstring curls are an important rehabilitation exercise for making sure that you restore knee flexion. Start standing with your feet hip width apart you can place your hands on a chair in front of you for balance, should you feel the need to. Slowly bend your knee, bringing your heel towards your glutes and keep your thighs parallel as you do so. Complete 10 repetitions at a slow pace for three sets in total. Next up, we have calf raises. Stand up straight and push through the balls of your feet and raise your heel up until you're standing on your tiptoes. Slowly lower back down to the floor until your heel touches the floor and then repeat for three sets of 10 repetitions. For an MCO injury, it's important that you strengthen up all the surrounding muscles of the knee to help speed up your recovery. It's often forgotten that the gastrocnemius, your calf, crosses over the knee joint and its two heads originate from the femur. The hardest of our beginner exercises are our next two exercises. First up is partial squats. Start off by facing forwards and place your feet hip width apart with your toes pointed out slightly. You can either do this freestanding or if you're feeling apprehensive post-surgery, you can do this with your hands on a chair in front of you. Engage your core and begin to bend at your hips, sitting back as if you was going to sit on a chair. Go no lower than 45 degrees and as you stand back up, try to focus on putting equal weight through both legs, ensuring your heels remain on the floor throughout the whole entirety of the movement. On a side note, make sure that your knees don't track beyond your toes or move inward during the exercise. If this is too challenging, persist with the previous exercises. This exercise is a good test to see if you're ready for the next stage of rehab. This now brings us onto our final exercise of our beginner phase rehabilitation exercises, which is wall slides. Stand upright with your back touching a wall Place your feet approximately 12 inches apart and six inches from the wall. Slowly lower your hips by bending your knees and slide down the wall. Go as far as is comfortable, but no lower than 90 degrees. Pause for five seconds at the bottom, then slowly slide back up to the starting position. Work up to three sets of 15 repetitions. Once you start to feel like you're regaining your range of motion and getting better at the exercises we've just covered, you can start stretching the surrounding muscles of the knee. Make sure to stretch both legs out because your uninjured leg can often become tight due to the increased workload it's been experiencing by compensating for your injured leg. So as a rule of thumb, try to stretch both legs out. It's also beneficial to see what your range of motion's like on your good side, because after all, we're trying to match both sides. So try over time to get your injured side's range of motion the same as your non-injured side. The stretches include a hamstring stretch, quadricep stretch, calf stretch, and ITB stretch. Let's now look at some advanced exercises. You don't have to do all of these at once. This is just to give you an idea of progressions of exercises we've covered, and also some new exercises that will help you challenge the knee further 
when you're ready to attempt them. This is known as the strength phase of MCL rehabilitation. The strength phase requires much more rest in between workouts. So only do these a maximum of three times per week. We're trying to strengthen up the knee now, the surrounding muscles. So give them ample time to recover after workouts. An example would be doing these on a Monday, Wednesday and a Friday. So having rest in between each day. Whilst I would add gym machinery into the mix at this point, I'll assume you don't have that luxury for the purpose of this video. Let's start off by looking at how we can make the exercises we've already covered harder. We can do knee slides without a towel. We can increase the depth of our squat by squatting onto a bench or chair. We can do single leg calf raises rather than on both feet. You can add ankle weights to your straight leg raises. For example, you might decide to increase the ankle weights by one pound a week. You can also do this for knee extensions and you can do this for the standing hamstring curl. For the first of our new advanced exercises, we're gonna take a look at a lunge matrix. I'm using an exercise slider here as I'm on a carpet surface. You may not need one, however, if you have wood or laminate flooring. Start off with your feet hip width apart, facing forwards, and place one slider underneath your foot. With the foot that the slider is underneath, begin to slide forwards, and as you do so, begin to bend your standing leg to complete the movement. Return back to the start position, then slide out to the side, keeping your leg straight. As you do this, your planted leg will bend and you should focus on trying to keep the shin vertical as you sit back into the lunge and return back to your start position. Finally, you can go into a reverse lunge. This time, place your forefoot only on the slider and begin to slide back into a lunge position as far as is comfortable. Your planted leg should begin to bend at the knee and you're aiming for a 90 degree angle at the knee, if possible. You can then put all of these together as a matrix by doing them back to back. So sliding forwards to the side and then into the reverse lunge, and that would be three repetitions. Aim for 15 repetitions, then switch over the foot that's on the slider. You're looking to do two sets on each foot, so that's four sets in total. Next up is step downs. Depending on the height of the object you choose to step up onto directly impacts how hard this next exercise is going to be. Stand behind a box, step or bench like I am and with your injured leg, step up onto the platform and then step back down with your good leg. Try to step down from the platform as slow as possible. Your injured leg will have to work hard to stabilize you as you slowly lower your good leg to the floor. It's important to avoid letting your knee cave in as you do this. Try to keep your knee nice and straight. To make this exercise harder, you can increase the height of the platform, add weights, or slow the eccentric lowering phase of the exercise down even further. Complete three sets of 10 repetitions on each leg. To further strengthen the injured knee's stability and coordination, we can do a lateral step down variation. I stand on the step with one leg, my other leg is freely hanging. To start, I bend the stabilizing leg until my opposing leg's heel touches the floor. Exactly the same as the previous exercise, focus on how your stabilizing knee tracks. The stabilizing knee is the one that's on the step. Make sure that it doesn't cave too far in or too far out. These step up exercises can require patience, practice and coordination to get right. Like before, complete three sets of 10 repetitions on each leg. Next up, we have single leg wall slides. Take all of the principles of the normal wall slide we covered earlier. This time, however, you're going to just stand on the leg that you're rehabilitating. Place your opposing leg's foot in contact with the bottom of the wall and begin to bend the leg that you're rehabilitating and aim for 90 degrees, going as far as is comfortable and then raising back up to the start position. Should this be too easy, an exercise progression would be pistol squats onto a bench. Aim for three sets of 12 repetitions on each side. This now brings us on to the last of our MCL rehabilitation exercises, which is Bulgarian split squats. Start standing in front of a bench and then place one foot onto the bench. Ensure that your hips and shoulders are square 
and slowly lower your back knee towards the floor. Your front knee will form a 90 degree angle or further dependent on your mobility and ensure your front knee tracks directly forwards as you do the exercise. I like to lean ever so slightly forward on this one to get more load on the knee. Make sure that if you do lean slightly forwards that your front knee never passes the position of your toes. Bulgarian split squats are great for coordination, introducing the knee to load and addressing asymmetries. Do both sides for 10 repetitions, three sets over. And that concludes the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching and making it this far. The whole point of this video was to try to cover the MCL in as much detail as possible, and also to go through the exercise that you can do to restore range of motion and start to strengthen up the MCL from home. As I say, there's lots of different machines and equipment in gyms that you can add into the strengthening phase of the exercises, but not everyone has access to those certain types of machines. If you've got any questions for me, don't hesitate to put them in the comments box. And if you liked this video, be sure to click like on the video and subscribe for more free and educational content. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub. I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you soon.